Hi, I'm Vance Shepherd, trustee here at Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Service is about to begin. Hey, let's go on in. Greetings to the Mount Calvary Baptist Church and welcome to all of our members and friends who are visiting with us in the Cypress Sanctuary. We're so happy and delighted and thankful to the Lord that you have joined us this morning on this beautiful Sabbath day, this Father's Day, to share with us in our worship service. We pray that as we go forth in our worship service that you will be blessed by the songs of Zion that are lifted up, by the word of the Lord that, is come, that will come forth from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Brian Bellamy, and by the petitions that are offered to the throne of mercy and grace. Now let us look forward to this hour of worship. I might say also at the outset that today is, in addition to being Father's Day, this is Holy Communion service here at our church. And we would encourage our members and all who will share with us in the Holy Communion ordinance to prepare your elements for that part of the worship service. Amen. Listen, y'all. Stop calling your name, cause I need you right now, Lord. Well, I'm calling your name, cause I need you right now, Lord. You know, sometimes I get tired, uh, and sometimes I get weak. That's why I'm calling, calling your name right now. Right now, Lord. You know what I'm praying. Uh, this prayer right now cause I need you Lord right now Lord you know I'm praying this prayer right now cause I need you right now Lord you know sometimes my way gets harder and sometimes my way gets dark that's why I'm calling, calling your name oh Lord yeah right now Lord oh well you know that I'm I said I'm singing this song right now Cause I need you right now, Lord I said sometimes I get weary And sometimes I get weak That's why I'm calling, calling your, your name, name Right now, right now, Lord Oh, 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 oh yeah Together, ain't God love the Lord? Come on, if you love Him, put your hands together. Yeah, oh, well, you know, sometimes I get weary, and sometimes I get weak. Why I'm calling your name right now, right now, Lord. Well, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. I need you right now, right now, right now, right now. I need you, Lord. Right now, I need you right Sometimes now. Sometimes I get tired, right now, right now. and I know I need you, Lord. Right now, I need you. Sometimes right now. I get weak, right now. I need you, right now, right now, right now. I need you. When right I get now. sick in my body, right now. I need you, right now, right now, right now. I right know now. you will be here right now, right now. Right always now. on time, right Lord. Now. I need you right, right now. now. I need you right now, right now, right now, right now Lord. Right yes, now. I, need I need you right now. now. I need you, Lord, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right now. I need well, right you now. know, sometimes I get weary and sometimes I get weak. That's why I'm calling your name. Right now, Lord. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Let us unite our hearts and our minds in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, 
As we prepare to go forth into this hour of worship, we come into your holy presence, acknowledging and confessing that we have missed the mark, that by word, thought, or deed, we have sinned. But if you should mark iniquity, O oh Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. And so we pray for cleansing by the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be able to come before thee with clean hands and with a pure heart. We pray that you would remove from our minds the trash and tinfoil that so easily distracts us, that we might keep our eyes fixed and fastened upon thee, the author and the finisher of our faith. Be with us now throughout this service, we pray in Jesus' name. As we together say, amen, amen. Hello everyone, my name is Deacon Egerton Campbell and I'll be reading the scripture this morning. It's taken from the book of John, chapter four, verses 46 to 54, and it reads as follows. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum, 47. When he had heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my son dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believeth the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same time, same hour, in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives, and he himself believeth, and his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Uh, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Our congregational hymn this morning is Lift Every Voice and Sing. This hymn was first sung, I believe, in 1910, James Weldon Johnson. And it is very apropos that we would sing this hymn this morning, having just received word recently that the President of the United States has signed into law a bill that makes Juneteenth a federal holiday. Juneteenth calls our remembrance to that day, June 19th in 1865, when the people of Texas two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, were notified that slavery had ended. We invite you, we encourage you to join with the choir in singing with uplifted voices in the cyber sanctuary. Lift every voice and sing.
to that moment in our worship service where we present our tithes and our offerings as unto the Lord. And we're reminded that giving is a part of worship. But we still hear the word saying that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. But Mount Calvary and friends of Mount Calvary we want you to know just how much we appreciate 
and how thankful we are to the Lord for the generosity that you have shown in your giving, in the giving of your tithes and of your offerings. Your gifts continue to make possible the outreach ministry that our church is involved in. And so we thank God for you, and we pray that you will continue in this spirit of generosity. There are four methods by which one is able to give. One may give through the easy tithes or through the cash apps or through the PayPal or you may send your check to the church by the postal system or bring it by the church. But in each and every instance, again, we thank God for you and for your gifts. And now let us look to the Lord as we thank him for the gifts and for the givers. Dear God, again, we thank you for this opportunity to give back unto you a portion of the manifold gifts that you have blessed us with. And we pray, dear Lord, that you would do with these our gifts, that you would receive these gifts from our feeble hands, and that you would do with them even as you did with the two little fishes and the five barley loaves. We pray that you would sanctify these our gifts and multiply them, that they might be used to thy glory and to thy honor and to the upbuilding of thy kingdom. And we offer our petition in the name of the one who has taught us how to give, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, as we together say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Calvary family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We would like to wish a happy Father's Day to all fathers and father figures. We pray that your day is blessed and you are encouraged by the love, admiration, and appreciation of your family and friends. At this time, we would like to greet any first-time visitors. Welcome to our cyber sanctuary. We pray that there is a blessing in the word and worship just for you today. At this time, Mount Calvary, I encourage you to be a cyber missionary and a techno evangelist by hitting the share button on Facebook or by cutting and pasting uh, the YouTube link to today's live services and texting it to your family and friends to worship with us today. There may be someone in your circle who may need to join us in worship and in the word. So take a few seconds to push out our worship service to others. I would like to remind you once again, if you have an announcement or ministry information that needs to be shared or names for the prayer list, please be sure to submit this through the church office. This will allow the information to get to the right place and to be acted upon appropriately and in a timely manner. In addition to sharing names uh, and prayer requests at prayer meeting, please share the information uh, with the church office as well. We request that all information be provided to the church office no later than 10 a.m. each Thursday morning for consideration to be added to the pastoral comments or for the announcement recordings. We are so very grateful to be at a place in the pandemic where the uh, numbers of cases are declining. Uh, however, uh, we must continue to be safe. Uh, that being the case, uh, we are announcing at this time that the next COVID testing uh, opportunities here at Mount Calvary will be on June 21st and June 22nd. The testing time is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on both days. Last week, we had a great time celebrating our graduates. Again, I want to congratulate our students and uh, wish them well as they pursue their personal goals in higher education and in the workforce. Special thanks to Sister Felicia Williams-Palmer and the baccalaureate team, Sisters Ella Miller, Sister Gail Gabriel, Deacon Audrey Hankinson for a job well done. 
Thank you for planning the activities, organizing the events, and putting forth the effort to ensure that Mount Calvary honored and recognized its graduates. We would also like to thank each of you who took out the time to attend our special call meeting uh, on last Wednesday with regard to our early loan payoff plan. We pray that as we are armed with information, we will participate and move forward in the great things God has for Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary, come out and get on board Virtual Vacation Bible School, which will be held uh, from June 21st through the 25th, 2021. That's right, starting tomorrow. Our students from pre-K, which is ages three to four only, uh, through grade 12 are encouraged to attend Vacation Bible School. Classes are from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the Zoom platform. The virtual adult class will be held uh, from 6 p.m. until 7.15 p.m. Everyone needs to register. Please come and get on board. I'm excited to share again on behalf of the Deacons Ministry that we will have our annual cookout Saturday, July 10th, 2021 at 12 noon here on the campus of Mount Calvary Baptist Church. So please mark your calendars and make plans to come out and join us. Since 2014, with the exception of 2020 due to the pandemic, Mount Calvary has been a host site for the Lincoln Park Community's National Night Out event. And by all accounts, it has always been a huge success. National Night Out promotes involvement in crime prevention, police community partnerships, and neighborhood camaraderie and sends a message to criminals that communities are organized and fighting back against crime. The date is Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2021. Please come out and enjoy the event. Exhibit tables will be available for church ministries and community organizations. The evangelism ministry is inviting anyone interested in, in planning this event to attend the next meeting on July 8th at 7.30 p.m. on the Microsoft Teams platform. Volunteers are needed for setup, takedown and cleanup, uh, food service, publicity, information, tables and other tasks. Please contact Deacon Deanna Dow or Deacon Mary McLean to sign up as a volunteer uh, or to be an exhibitor in the national, at the National Night Out event. This weekend, as we are celebrating our fathers, we are also celebrating freedom uh, as we commemorate Juneteenth. Uh, Juneteenth, which is officially known as uh, a national holiday for Independence or Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, Emancipation Day is now a federal holiday in the United States of America celebrating the emancipation of the slaves. Originating in Galveston, Texas in 1866, it has been celebrated annually on June 19th throughout the United States. Um, this is because that although Slaves in the rest of the country were free earlier in the year of 1865. It was not until June 19th that the message arrived in Galveston, Texas, that those who were enslaved were freed. And so we all became free uh, on June 19th. And so since this time, this has been an informal holiday where we commemorate the freedom of our ancestors. This year, it is now a national holiday. And so I want to encourage you to celebrate Juneteenth this weekend uh, by researching some of your family history and learning about your own enslaved ancestors. For a brief moment, I want to share with you some information about one of my enslaved ancestors. So this is a picture of my great, great, great grandfather. His name was Jeremiah Creasy Smith. He lived from 1837 until 1919. He was 28 years old at the age of emancipation. He was born to Osborne and Betsy Creasy in Portsmouth, Virginia, sold to the Smith family in Perkimans County in Pitt County, North Carolina, separated from his parents and brought to Nekina, Columbus County, North Carolina, by Henry Cannon Smith, a son of the Pitt County Smiths. My family continues to live in Nekina until this very day. Grandpa Jerry was uh, tall 
and strong. Therefore, he was used to breed babies like an animal with other enslaved women. He married, after the emancipation, he married my great-great-grandmother, Barzilla Gore, and they gave birth to nine children whom he raised on land that he owned. And I'm proud to say that that land is still in the family today. I am here and my family is here because of the strength and resiliency of Grandpa Jerry and many other of our enslaved ancestors. So during this weekend, take the time to celebrate the spirit of resilience and survival that has caused us to thrive and flourish today. Before Deacon Johnson comes to lead us in our altar prayer, let me just share with you those who are on our prayer list. Please pray for Deacon Eleanor Crocker, Deaconess Penny Newsom, Jeanette Gillette, Deaconess Anita Neal, as well as her daughter, uh, Sister Anita Neal Powell, Deaconess Patricia Smith, Sister Anita Walker, Sister Pearl Drain, Brother Ralph Meadows, Ms. Paula Glover, Sister Margaret Meadows in Virginia. Let us keep them all in prayer. Good morning, Mount Calvary, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers and the father figures in our cyber sanctuary. My name is Deacon Alfred Johnson, and I'm here to deliver the altar prayer. Let us go to the throne of grace. Great and mighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords, creator of heaven and of earth, our Alpha and our Omega, you're our beginning and our end. Father, we come on this Communion Sunday and Father's Day thanking you for this day. Father, for we know that this day was not promised. And we are thankful, Father, to be counted among the living. And hope, Father, today that we are a bit, be a bit better than we were yesterday. Father, we thank you for that touch of love that woke us up this morning and closed in our right mind and enabling us to go out on another day's journey. Father, we thank you for being our bridge over troubled waters, our shelter in the time of a storm, a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway. Father, we are just so thankful. If we had 10,000 tongues, Father, we could not thank you enough or praise you enough because you've been just that good to us. On this Father today, Father, we come thanking you for all the fathers and for being a loving father to all of us. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and the reality teaches us that some fathers excel and some fail. Father, we ask your blessing on them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, remember the many sacrifices that fathers make for their children and their families, and the ways both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond their reach. So too we remember those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent. The grandfathers, the uncles, the brothers, the cousins, the teachers, the pastors, the coaches, and the women in our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. Father, we also come thanking you today for the recognition of Juneteenth as a federal holiday. A day, Father, that slavery was finally, it was finally realized that slavery had been abolished in the entire country. Father, we know that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So, Father, we are thankful today for this new leadership that has sought to bring this to light. Father, on this Sunday morning, we just continue to praise your name because you are so good to us. You kept us, you blessed us. And Father, we come on this morning asking a special blessing on those who are sick and shut in. Father, we ask that you go into the hospital rooms 
into the homes, wherever they are, Father, with your healing touch this morning, if it is your will. Father, we ask that you bless all the members of this branch of Zion, we call Mount Calvary, and all of those in our cyber sanctuary. Bless each man, woman, boy, girl. Father, we know that you not only can bless and provide the needs, Father, but you can provide the desires of our hearts. So we just ask you to continue to bless us, Father. Father, we ask that you bless those who are traveling over the highways and byways, Father. Provide them with traveling mercies, Father, so that they will be arrived safely, but also, Father, may be able to return to us. Father, we also ask that you bless those who are experiencing bereavement at this time, Father. Your word teaches us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, Father, which is far better. So we ask your comforting spirit for those, Father, who are in need of that comforting spirit today, Father. Oh, Father, we ask that you bless those in the military who are even maybe on foreign soil this morning, Father. Father, bless them, protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, Father, and also allow them to return safely. Father, we ask that you bless the leadership here at Mount Calvary, our senior pastor, the entire ministerial staff, all the officers and the members, Father. Continue to teach, lead, guide, and direct us in your will and in your way. Father, we ask a special blessing on our senior pastor, Reverend Bellamy, as he comes to deliver the bread of life, the message that you have laid upon his heart, Father. You've already anointed him and appointed him, Father. So just loose him this morning, Father, and let him preach your unadulterated gospel, Father. And if there is anyone in our cyber sanctuary, Father, who do not know you and the pardon of their sins, Father, we ask you to prick their hearts and have them make a connection and let us know that they are now giving you their heart. And we, Father, will be happy to take them into this fresh design we call Mount Calvary and fellowship with them and help them grow as they help us grow. Oh, Father, we are so thankful for this graduation season and all you're doing for our children. Continue to bless them as we go into the summer months, Father. School has just ended for many of them, Father, and we know that there are difficulties out there during this spare time, so continue to abide with them, Father. Abide with them day in and day out. Continue to help them to learn, Father, but not only learning and knowledge, Father, but learning of you and all that you can do for them. We love you, Father. We give you praise this morning, Father, because you are worthy to be praised. We give hallelujah to your name this morning, Father. We thank you, Father. We praise you. And Father, as we come to break the bread of life, for we recognize your son's broken body and his shed blood, we ask that you bless us, Father, Bless us in the remembrance of your son, Jesus. And Father, we will always be mindful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For it's in your precious son, Jesus' name that we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. To show me you would never leave me there You claim because I was made for so much more I am your child And I'm worth fighting for Though heavy was the weight of my mistakes You carried me and refused to let me sink under the pressure you meant for me to soar I am your child and I'm worth fighting for eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard all you have planned for me and nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much more Still worth fighting for And now I'm moving By faith and not by sight Towards victory By the power of your might You're straightening out my paths It's opening every door I am your child And I'm worth fighting for Eyes have 
haven't seen is haven't heard all you have planned for me and nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much more still worth fighting for and that's why I'm pressing towards the mark because the calling on my life is worth fighting for and I'll keep my mind stayed on you Jesus because the peace it brings is worth fighting for and I'll be faithful for my wife and children because my family is worth fighting for know this world is not my home but your kingdom here is worth fighting for I got a mansion over in glory And my new home is worth fighting for Till I see it I shout Hallelujah here Cause my praise is worth fighting for Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah, life with you is worth fighting for. Hallelujah, 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 life with you is worth fighting for. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, all you have planned for me. There is so much more still worth fighting for. Praise the Lord, Mount Calvary. On this Father's Day in the year of our Lord 2021, I am led to share from the scriptures already read from the subject, Godly Fatherhood. Godly Fatherhood. This Sunday, the third Sunday in June, is the day that our nation has set apart to recognize and celebrate our fathers. We celebrate our fathers because they are very important to us. Our fathers play a central role in who we are and in who we become. Our fathers are our protectors, our providers, and along with our mothers and siblings, they are one of our very first friends. I can remember just a few years ago when I was getting ready to become a first-time father, I was overwhelmed with joy, but at the same time, I was a bit anxious about what kind of father I would be. Of all the jobs that I had had to that point, being a father was the most important job. Being a father was a job that I could not afford to mess up. This feeling only intensified as I had lost my own father the year before so he would not be around to give me regular advice. What I have come to learn in these recent years of being a father now to two baby girls is that as long as I do all that I can to love and support my children, put Christ first and pray for them, then I will have given my best because God's grace is sufficient. And unlike an item we might buy at an appliance store, having a new baby <laughs> and becoming a parent does not come with a handbook. And while we love our children and want to give them our very best, we must realize that our Father in heaven has already given us his very best in Jesus Christ. The best thing that we can do as parents and as fathers in particular on this Father's Day is to ascribe to be godly fathers. 
To say that one should aspire to be a godly parent, a, a godly father, may sound like an oxymoron because that which is godly is holy and divine and perfect. And we may have discovered by now our parents, our mother and father, as wonderful as they may be, are far from perfect. There, there was a time when I thought that my mother and father could do anything, and I think my little girls are still in that phase. They think Dada is all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> but as we grow, we learn that our parents are simply doing the best that they can, but they are far from perfect. But what makes one a godly parent and a godly father is the capacity to reach beyond our own imperfection by grace through faith to receive Christ as our Savior and to do all we can to present Christ as we represent Christ to our children. Yes, we must present Christ as we represent Christ to our children. And in the text, we find a, a, a perfect example of this. In the text, we find that Jesus has just returned to Cana of Galilee, the place where he performed his first public miracle uh, as recorded in the beginning of John chapter 2, that of turning water into wine during the wedding feast. We also read that there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When this nobleman heard that Jesus had returned to Galilee, he went to him and begged him to come down and heal his son uh, because his son was at the point of dying. Verse 4, 48, Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Yet the nobleman replied, sir, please come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, go your way. Go home. Your, your son will live. According to the text, no other words were exchanged. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started back to his house. And according to verse 51, before the man could even get back to his house, his servants met him along the way and said to him, your son is alive. The man then inquired of these messengers, at what time did he get better? And they said to him, it was yesterday about the seventh hour. He knew that this was the same time that Jesus had spoken the word that his son would live. And as a result of this, this man became a believer in Jesus and not only him, but his entire household. Now, from the text, I would posit to you two things, beloved. The first is that this noble man is uh, uh, in the text is an example of a godly father. My second position is that this man gives us a clear illustration of what it means to be a godly father. To my first position that this man was a godly father, I make this claim simply because of his faith. The nobleman was not a prophet, nor was he one of the 12 disciples. Nonetheless, he was a godly man because of his faith in Jesus. We can surmise from early in the text that this man had faith because we read that as soon as Jesus had, to re had returned to Cana of Galilee, this man came to Jesus believing that Jesus had the power to heal his son. This man's faith is predicated on the fact that this was not Jesus' first time in that region. Verse 46 reminds us that Jesus had already performed his first public miracle of turning water into wine in that same region. We can surmise that this man, like everyone else in the region, had heard about this miracle and concluded in some capacity that Jesus could help his son. Yes, he heard about what Jesus had done for the wedding and wanted to find out what Jesus could do for his household. Oh, yes, he heard about what Jesus had done for others, and now he wanted to learn what Jesus could do for his son. The man heard, and Paul said that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This man heard about Jesus and had faith enough to try him for himself. And that's one thing about human nature. If, if, if we hear about something good long enough, we're going to have to try it out for ourselves. He heard about Jesus and had faith to believe in the power of Jesus over the life of his son. And that's it. 
That is all it takes for us to qualify him as a godly father without a title, without a position in the church, without ever attending a Sunday school class. This man simply heard about Jesus, believed in Jesus, and did what he could to get Jesus to his child. A godly father is a father who has faith in Jesus Christ and believes in the power of God to be real in the life of his children. And this nobleman, this godly father, and the actions he takes to get Jesus to his son demonstrates for us what it means to be a godly father. And in studying his actions, those of us who are fathers, I pray will be encouraged to be godly fathers. And I pray that the rest of us will be encouraged and grateful for the godly fathers and or godly father figures that we have had in our lives. Question that we must ask the text is, how does the nobleman in John 4 demonstrate godly father? fatherhood to us. How does he demonstrate godly fatherhood to us? First thing is this. He takes personal responsibility for his child. He takes personal responsibility for his child. The fact that this man is described as a nobleman means that he is a member of the Galilean aristocracy. It means that he is a man of means and class and status. It means that he has both servants as well as friends in high places. Yet when his child is in trouble, when his son is getting ready to die, he does not send a servant to Jesus. He does not use his extensive network to get someone to persuade Jesus to visit his son. No, he takes personal responsibility for his son's welfare and he went to Jesus for himself. He came to Jesus himself and essentially says, Jesus is my son who's in trouble. Jesus is my boy that's getting ready to die. I am his father and I'm here on his behalf to implore you to come and see about him. I did not send anyone. I am here to be personally responsible for my son. He's my son. He's my boy. He's my responsibility. And I'm here to stand in the gap between life and death for him, Jesus. Will you come and see about my child? This shows us that a godly father is personally responsible for his child. This means that he shows up when his child is in need. This means that he is present to support and protect and provide and defend. This means that he gives himself over for the welfare of his child. It is of the utmost importance that as we strive to be men of God, that when the Lord blesses us to experience fatherhood, we make sure that we are present and personally responsible for our children. When my oldest daughter, Desi, was born, my wife was in her third year of medical residency, which means that pretty much right after birth, Desi became my very own baby. My wife went back to residency and left me with a newborn, and you know what? I was proud to have her. Uh, this was a couple years before the pandemic when it was safe to be out, and I took Desi everywhere I went. I would get dressed up and dress her up, and we would go everywhere happily, my baby and me. And beloved, I cannot tell you how many times when I was out alone with my daughter, someone would come up to me and say to me, it's so nice of you to babysit your daughter. And although people meant well by that statement, it always bothered me because a father cannot babysit his child. That's his child. Desi was my child, and as a man striving to be a godly father, she was my responsibility. Godly fathers take personal responsibility for their children. Not only that, but uh, we learn in the nobleman that the nobleman went out of his way to help his child. He went out of his way to help his child. Not only does this nobleman accept personal responsibility of bringing his son's condition to Jesus himself, but he goes out of the way to do it. Why do you say that, Pastor? Well, for this man to travel from his home in Capernaum to Cana was a four-day journey. And in each of the four days, he would have to walk between eight to 12 miles in the burning desert sun. 
But because he was a father who loved his child, and because he was a father whose child was in trouble, and because he was a man who believed in the power of God to make a difference in the life of his child, he set out on that long, hard, tedious journey to bring Jesus back to his house. And beloved, we must be grateful, we must be thankful for our fathers, our grandfathers, and the patriarchs in our lives who have worked and sacrificed and went out of the way to make sure that we are provided for. We must celebrate the godly fathers who have gone out of the way for their children. Not only that, but I would add that the nobleman knew when to ask for help. He demonstrates godly fatherhood in that he knew when to ask for help. Beloved, it, it is not hard for men to fall into the trap of believing that they have to be everything and do everything for their families. When the reality of the matter is, is that sometimes the best thing that you can do for your family is to ask for help. And that is exactly what the nobleman does by going to Jesus. Although the text does not explicitly say so, it would not be far-fetched to assume that someone of the nobleman's status and of his means had reached out to the physicians of his day and time within his area to do what they could to assist his son's condition. Perhaps he even went to other people to pray, but, but by the time he gets to Jesus... The nobleman tells Jesus that his son is at the point where he's getting ready to die. We need to read this as the man acquiescing his ability to do anything within his fatherly and manly might to change the situation. He was in the place where only God could make a difference. I want to ask a question to those of you in the cyber sanctuary. Have you ever been in the place in life? Uh, well, only God can make a difference. And I wonder, is there someone in the cyber sanctuary who can be a witness that when you got to the place in life where God was all you had, you found out that God was all you needed? Hallelujah. Someone uh, in your living room, in your bedroom, your kitchen, wherever you're watching this, you ought to shout only God, <laughs> only God, only God. And in his only God moment, this nobleman, this godly father made his way to Jesus. Uh, to ask for help. And I, I, I pray to encourage some parent, some father on this Father's Day by letting you know that you have not done all you can until you have put your child and your child's issues in Jesus' hands. It's okay to ask for help and to ask God for help. Additionally, we learn from this nobleman that he trusted God's word over the life of his child. He trusted God's word over the life of his child. And in verse 49 of the text, uh, the nobleman pleaded with Jesus and said, Sir, come down before my child dies. And in verse 50, Jesus says, Go your way. Your son lives. And I say to you again, there's no record of any further exchange of conversation. Immediately, the nobleman believed what Jesus said and turned and started back on his four-day journey to Capernaum. Uh, this man had traveled all this way, this four-day journey on foot to bring Jesus back to his house to heal his son, but Jesus does not follow the man back to Capernaum. He simply speaks a word of healing. Go your way, your son is healed, and the man goes back to his house, starts out back to his house, believing his son is healed. Without any receipts <laughs> without, be without being able to FaceTime and see if his son's eyes are open. He simply believed that his son was healed for no other reason than that he had received a word from the Lord. As godly fathers, it is our job to receive the word of the Lord, to know the word of the Lord, and to believe God's promises over our lives and the lives of our children. And, 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 and beloved, we find, that G, we find that the boy was healed in that same hour. Ah, ah, uh, Jesus spoke the word and as the man is traveling home, the messengers uh, come to him from his house, servants come to him from his house and they say, your boy lives and, and, and he asked, well, uh, at what time did he get better? They said yesterday around the seventh hour, he knew that at the moment Jesus spoke the word, his son was healed. Jesus spoke it, 
And he believed it. God said it and he believed it. And beloved, that's all we have to do to walk in victory is to know what God spoke. If we believe it, it's already done. Uh, for my children, what God has said, I believe. For my lineage, what God has said, I believe. For my healing, what God has said, I believe. For my future, what God has said, I believe. For Mount Calvary, what God has said, I believe. For you in the cyber sanctuary, right where you are, what God has said, we have to believe. We have to stand on the word of God. Let me tell you this quick story, and I want to share one more thing with you about the nobleman. And, and, and the story goes like this. There, there was a boy who was playing in the basement of his house. And as he was playing in the basement, the house began to catch on fire. Everybody made it out of the house except for the little boy. He didn't know what was going on. And when the, the father did a head count, he realized that one of his sons was still in the house. Uh, when the fire people came, they said to, he said to the fire uh, personnel, I, I have one child, he's somewhere in the house, I don't know where he is. And, and, and the boy began to hear all the commotion outside and he began to smell the smoke and he began to realize that the house was on fire and he, 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 he began to panic and try to figure out how to get out. He went up to the stairs, but when he went up the stairs and touched the doorknob, the doorknob was hot. And it burned his hands. He ran back downstairs and he saw that the only place of escape was a small window, a cellar window in the corner of the basement, but he was too short to reach it. And so uh, uh, after a while, he kept trying things to, to prop up his height. And eventually he found something that got him tall enough or high enough to get out of the window. He got out of the window and ran to his mother and ran to his father. They hugged him and they said, son, how did you get out of the basement? And they said, he said, well, daddy, uh, mom, I was there in the basement and I saw my only escape was the window, but I was too short to get to the window. So I knew I was going to have to stand on something to get out of the house and so I found an old Webster's dictionary and I stood on that but that wasn't high enough to get me out of the house and then I found some old phone books I stood on that and that wasn't high enough to get me out of the house but then I saw on the table our old family Bible and I put the Bible in the corner under the window and when I stood on the Bible the Bible was tall enough to help me to get out of the house and so in other words mama and daddy I stood on the word and standing on the word got me out of the fire. I wonder if there's anybody in the cyber sanctuary who can be a witness that if you stand on God's word, you will get out of the fire. We've got to stand on God's word as godly fathers, as godly parents. The word that God has spoken over us, the word that God has recorded in the Bible, we have to stand on his word. But lastly, beloved, the nobleman teaches us about godly fatherhood and that he leaves a legacy, a godly legacy. The nobleman leaves a godly legacy because the Bible says that after his son was healed and after he realized that his son was healed at the word of the Lord, that he became a believer and not only him, this is where the legacy part comes in, but his house, also believed because he had faith in God his faith in Jesus spread throughout his house and created a godly legacy the question I want to ask each father and father figure this father's day is what kind of legacy are you going to leave your children I want to share this with you uh, 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 in, in our family home of Nakina, North Carolina, there's a nearby town called Whiteville and in Whiteville uh, uh, there are stores. Nakina's the country, Whiteville's where you go to market, you know. And, and growing up there was a store that has, has closed down in recent years uh, uh, that had been in operation for almost a century. And when I was a little boy, I went into the store looking for sneakers. You know, at the end of the summer, it was one of the stores we would go to to get our back-to-school clothes. And so we went in the store, and I, there were some sneakers that I liked. And um, I asked the, uh, one of the persons working, you know, how much, how much are these shoes? And he gave me the price. And it turned out that he was the owner of the store and that his father had owned the store and his grandfather before him. 
And so he gave me the price, and I put them back, thinking in the back of my mind that, you know, when I got my money at the end of the summer, I may come back and get the sneakers. And he said, young man, are you one of the Smiths from Nekina? Uh, that's my mother's side of the family. Smith is the surname. And I said, well, yes, sir. My grandparents are Smiths. He said, I tell you what, uh, if you want those shoes, you don't have to pay for them today. I can just write your name down, and you can come back and pay for them. And being from the city, I, I had never heard of any such thing. I knew what layaway was, but this man was going to give me uh, shoes on the fact that I was a smith from Nekina. And so I asked him, why would you do that? He said, son, I knew your great-grandfather, and those smiths have always paid their bills. My great-grandfather died 40 years before I was born, but he left such a legacy that I could go on his name and get something on credit. A godly father leaves a godly legacy. I want to encourage you, Mount Calvary, men of Mount Calvary, fathers, uncles, grandfathers, stepfathers, godfathers, all father figures, uh, even big brothers, uh, to aspire to be a godly father. Uh, aspire to lead a godly legacy. And to do this, you simply have to receive Jesus Christ and keep God first. Uh, no one expects perfection out of us, but it would behoove us to present Christ as we represent Christ to those for whom we are personally responsible and our capacity as fathers and father's figures. At this time, we want to extend an invitation. There may be someone here who does not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. If you desire to be saved, you can come today and give your life to Christ. The Bible teaches us in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart one believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so if you are in the cyber sanctuary, you desire to be saved, you don't have to come in to a physical building to give your life to Christ, you can give your life to Christ today. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home, you don't have to look any further. We will gladly receive you as a member of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church today. And at this time, our very own Reverend Sterling King will come and share with you just how you can do this. The pastor has presented a wonderful, wonderful message, the godly father. The Godly Father is one of faith. The Godly Father is one who leaves a godly legacy. There may be someone in our cyber sanctuary this morning who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. If you are in that category, we invite you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to accept Him as your personal Savior and Lord. There are four categories for membership. You may come by a profession of faith as a candidate for baptism. You may come based upon your Christian experience indicating and acknowledging what God has already done in your life. You may come in restoration if you've been away from your home church. If this was your home church and you've been away for a while, you may come in restoration. Or if you are away from your home church, out of town, and you want to just be under the watch care of a pastor, and in communion with the group of baptized believers in Jesus Christ, you may come as a watch care member. And for each of those four categories, you may text the number 1-888-490-2825. The key words are on the screen. If you want to have a word of prayer. Again, you can text the number 
490-2825. The keywords are on the screen. If you desire to have someone to talk with you, we have an excellent counseling ministry here at the church. And you can text the number 1-888-490-2825. The keywords are on the screen. Or if you do not have that technology, you want to just by telephone, you may call 301-424-8000. Eight seven one seven extension one four one. We would be happy, excited, and indeed very delighted to receive you into fellowship here at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Rockville, Maryland, where you will be joined in fellowship with other baptized believers in Jesus Christ. Won't you come? Won't you come this morning? Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and the assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in our knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. To walk circumspectly in the world and to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. To abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over each other in brotherly love to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of the Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. At this time, brothers and sisters, I ask that you secure your elements. If you have received a communion packet from the church, will you get it at this time? If not, uh, why don't you get some bread, uh, some juice, that we might all prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper at this time. And we ask that Reverend King would at this time pray over the elements. Let us stand on our hearts and our minds in a brief word of prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful unto thee for this. Another opportunity to share in this memorial service. Where we will partake of the bread that represents your body that was broken upon the cross and the fruit of the vine that represents your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We pray, dear Lord, that as we partake of these elements, that we will receive as only you can provide the spiritual nourishment for the journey that lies ahead. And we offer our petition in the name of the one who died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our Lord, as we together say, 
Amen. 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 Beloved, here we are for the sixth time this year, the year of our Lord 2021, gathered around the Lord's table to receive the Lord's Supper. And on this particular Communion Sunday, we have other celebrations. We are celebrating Juneteenth. And so as we take the Lord's Supper, we are grateful for the faith of our ancestors in Jesus Christ that has brought us to this present hour. But at the same time, we celebrate our fathers and we take this communion in commemoration of our heavenly father who gave us his very best when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. The scriptures teach us that in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples so that he would partake of his final Passover with them. And at that Passover feast, the Bible says that he took bread and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us now take it and eat it. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine and gave it representing his shed blood for the remission of our sins. Let us now take it and drink it. All over the cyber sanctuary for his body, we say hallelujah. And for his blood, we say hallelujah. The Bible says that they then went out to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. And we are so grateful that because of Jesus, we have a song that even the angels cannot sing. For we have been redeemed. At this time, let us receive the Lord's benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for being our Father in heaven. And we thank you for the fathers you have given us down here. We pray that each and every father would be encouraged to be fathers after your own heart, to be godly fathers. Uh, where we are imperfect, you are perfect. Help us to do all that we can to represent your son Jesus to our children uh, so that their lives would be blessed and so that they would be your disciples and please you. Now, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we pray that the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit would rest, rule and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. 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 Go in peace.